Right, this is again the Devar Malchut of the Rebbe, <clears throat> speeches that the Rebbe gave, a series of speeches in 1992, shortly before he had a stroke. <clears throat> Which um, rendered him mute, he couldn't, wasn't able to speak. So these are <clears throat> very important speeches, especially when we consider that the Lubavitcher Rebbe, he is the Messiah, he's the Mashiach, that Judaism has been awaiting since its beginning. <clears throat> and uh, namely that he will, especially after the temple was destroyed, that he will uh, do all the things the Rambam says the Mashiach is supposed to do, right? Uh, Maimonides, in, right in the end of his amazing 14 volume uh, book, which uh, masterpiece, which included thousands and thousands of laws and, that include all the laws of Judaism. So in the end, he talks about what Mashiach is. He says, it's basically going to be a Jew that's going to do the same thing as Moses did, to <clears throat> take all the Jews out of their limitations, to bring back true Jewish identity, that all the Jews will <clears throat> return to the Torah and its commandments, according to how it's explained in the Talmud, in the Shulchan Aruch. And when that happens, then, <clears throat> and also to fight the battles of Judaism, there's all these forces that oppose Judaism, the, the, the Mashiach will, and the main force, of course, is ignorance. The Mashiach will um, defeat these forces <clears throat> that try to weaken Judaism and change Judaism and eliminate Judaism and eliminate the Torah and change the Torah. <clears throat> and that's what Mashiach will do. And eventually it's going to be that he fights these battles. He's going to build a third temple. The third temple will come from heaven, build a third temple, and then that'll wake up all the Jews. All the Jews will decide they want to do all the commandments. And the only way you can do that is in Israel with the Holy Temple. That's going to drive the, draw the Jews. <coughs> <coughs> to the Holy Land. Who is this person? Lubavitcher Rebbe. Lubavitcher Rebbe, he's the one. So this Lubavitcher Rebbe is not just the leader of one um, small group of super religious Jews. The Lubavitcher Rebbe is the leader of the whole entire world. <clears throat> it's going to bring true values to the world, a productive world, a, a, a blessed world, a happy world, a world full of love. There won't have to be, does not have to be any <clears throat> wars or destruction or, or more, the Jews are not going to rule over everybody. They're going to tell everybody what to do. Everybody's going to want and to do what the right thing is. And the world will be basically the same world. Eventually, there's going to be amazing miracles. There'll be the raising of the dead, and there'll be sorts of miracles. But the miracles will be in a good way, unless man don't want it to be a good way. I mean, if if you know there's nations or people that they want to make trouble for the Jews, they want to make trouble for each other. So you know, what can you do? <clears throat> All right. So now the Rebbe is explaining. The Rebbe is explaining something to us. The Torah. The Torah is the only book in the world which is 100% verified truth given before 3 million people in the desert. 600,000 men from the age of 20 and up, not counting the women, the children. <coughs> Some people say also not counting the, the, the people above 60. In any case, millions of people all saw this, and it's been passed down, and Jews have been giving their lives for this. And here is the Torah. So let's understand the Torah. In this week's Torah portion, we see a very interesting thing. And that there's everything. There is, first of all, the story of the first tablets. It talks about the great greatness of the first tablets. Then all of a sudden, it talks about, that's the highest of the high. Jews are Mount Sinai, they receive the first tablets. In this week's Torah portion, it talks about and describes in great detail how great the first tablets were, and they were the, 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 the tablets were made, God made them himself, and God carved them out himself. Right after that, it talks about <coughs> the golden calf, the sin of the golden calf, worst terrible sin there could possibly be. After that, it talks about how Moses went up on Mount Sinai and he 
prayed to God for forgiveness, and God forgave the Jews, gave him 13 attributes of mercy. Then it talks about the second tablets, second tablets the Jews have. <clears throat> so the Rebbe says, very interesting, in this week's Torah portion, we have the beginning, the middle, and the end of this whole entire story. It's all mentioned here. It's not scattered around. So the Rebbe says, this is a telling us a big lesson, and this is the lesson. HaKodesh Baruch Hu God, <coughs> Kava, he's decided, Shekol and Yanim, that everything there is in creation, <coughs> the Chalkin can be <coughs> divided into three general categories. There's a lot of other ways you can get into 10, 10 Sfirot, etc. But there's three. <coughs> what are the three? Rosh, Toch, Sof. Beginning, middle, and end. Kodem call, first of all, Borosh comes to the head, the beginning. Shekola Batoch, that includes inside of it everything. The beginning, like a seed. Right? A plant has a seed. When the seed goes into the ground, the seed. Then afterwards, the, the, the head, the seed, which is the beginning, it develops into the middle. The content and the body of the thing. By means of that, until finally there comes what's called the purpose, the result. The total completion of this thing. Right? Let's take a car. A car, first of all, there's all the raw materials, there's the plans, there's the factory, and then that's that's step number one. Number two, the actual car is made. That's the actual car. But that's not the purpose. That's just the, the purpose is that a person buys the car and he drives it. Right? That's the beginning, the middle, and the end. <clears throat> so it is with everything. That's the way God made things. Everything has to have a beginning. Everything has to have a middle. Everything has to have an end. And the world had a beginning. That's what Judaism says. Right? There's others that say, no, the world always existed in some form. No, Judaism says the world had a beginning. <clears throat> that was in the beginning when God created the world. There's the middle, that's where we're in now. And the end will be coming in the Mashiach. We'll see. When there's completed the ultimate purpose, <clears throat> it says that the end the result was really the first thing in thought. Right? Take the example of the car. Before this car was made, so the producer had an idea of the finished product, the car being sold, people driving it around. That's what he wants, right? In order to do that, he made the factory, he mined all the, 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 the metal, whatever it is. He has all the plans, right? He's, that, that's the beginning. He made the car. That's the middle. <clears throat> and the, the purpose, for the purpose, the end, the people should have the cars, cars, and they should drive. In general, this is three things. <clears throat> this is, can be divided into three things in the Torah. Number one, Hayesod, Vatchilas Kala Inyan, the Torah as it is the beginning of everything. The Torah is called Reshis. It is called the beginning. Reshi Darko. The Torah was there before the world. Kihi Kad Malolam. The Torah precedes the world. And the Torah is also the purpose of everything. So here we go. Breshit, the beginning, first word of the Torah. The world was created for the sake of the Torah, that the Torah is called Reshit. That's number one. So the Torah is number one. Number two, the world. Bria to Olam, God creates the world. Va'avod Bria, and serving the service of the Jewish people in the world. And when we're talking about the world, when we're talking about the world, we're talking about also all the spiritual worlds. And why did God make all these spiritual worlds, put us in the world? In order that we should come to the goal. What's the goal? What's the goal? The goal is Gomar, completion, everything. The Gula mitit v'shlem, the total redemption of the world. Kishetimalei taklit ashlemot, then they'll be revealed the purpose of this world. Shalakach, therefore, was beginning, created in the beginning. And why did God create the world? Because God wants to be revealed here. That's the idea of the Holy Temple. It's a little bit of an example, a free sample of what the world is going to be like in its completion. There'll be service of God, and there'll be revelation of God. <clears throat> everyone will do what God wants, and everyone will see, receive a revelation of God. There'll be truth. There'll be happiness. There'll be harmony. <clears throat> there'll be purpose. 
Meaning, so there's three things. The Torah is the is before the world. Then there's the world, and then there's the purpose for the world, the the redemption, the the geula. Yesh Lomar, we can say these three things are hinted to the three letters of the Hebrew alphabet. Aleph, base, gimel. Call the Torah, the whole entire Torah is the Ten Commandments comes from the first word. Aleph, Anochi. That's the first word of the Ten Commandments. That means the essence of God. I am God. I created the fourth of the Ten Commandments is that God created the heavens and the earth in six days. Right. So the Aleph of the Anochi, that's the beginning. That's the Torah. That's the essence of the Torah. The first of the Ten Commandments, the first letter of the Ten Commandments. And Nechlolos and Metechila, Aleph, it begins with Aleph. Then the second one, that's the Torah, is before the world. That's number one. Then we have the world. The world, that's the middle. Bresh, that's Beit. Bereshit, Bor Elokim. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the world. That's the middle. The world is the middle. Right? The Torah is the beginning. The world is the middle. And what's the end? <clears throat> It says that the bait, this letter bait, the world was created. Like the rabbis say, it's the beginning, and then there is what the rabbis say. That's Aleph, is Anochi, the Torah. Bait is Breshit, the world. And Gimel is Geula, and the redemption, the future redemption, what we call the future re re resolution of what the world is supposed to be like. Obapratios. Yoter, even more, Yeshnam Gimel and Yanif, there are the three things in the whole order of the creation in itself. <clears throat> in itself. Kodem call, first of all, it rose up in God's, now this is already a little bit of Kabbalistic, it rose up in God's mind to create the world. Aleph, base, God actually created the world. Gimel, God, com, God created the world. Gimel, the, the realization of the purpose of the world the future redemption by means of our <clears throat> deeds in the, the course of the exile that we're in, in the world. In the language of the Kabbalah and Hasidut, Aleph is, first of all, or ein sof, Aleph, or ein sof, the infinite light of God that fills all being. Or ein sof, before the tzimtzum, before God spoke, before he correct, uh, contracted himself, whatever. After that is what's called the tzimtzum, God began to speak in order, they, they, they're, right? So it says that there remained a hollow spot and an empty place. And the intention is in order that the God should reveal himself in the world until he reveals this, that's already the world. First of all, we have the creator. Then we have the creation, the creation. And the, right, that's how God spoke. He contracted himself, all these Kabbalistic books. They're talking about the first simtsum, the second simtsum, the, 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 the order, order of creation, the shtaushalut, the different worlds, etc., the, the svirot. And then the final, <clears throat> so that's number one is God. Number two is how God creates the world. Number three is the, <clears throat> is the completion of this creation that God draws down into the empty space, the infinite light of God. So I, I, I made a little bit of a mistake. Not, not that way. In, before the world is created, there's also these three steps. Number one is God before the world is created. Number two is that God makes what's called an empty space. He prepares for the world to be created. And number three, that's so to speak the world. And number three is he fills it up with light. He makes this new light. That's, it says, the orange of a bleak of wool shall leave Nehat Simpson, that God fills up the empty space that he made, which is called the world, he fills it up with godliness that it can make a dwelling for God in the world. Okay, so what do we learn here? There's three steps in everything. There's <clears throat> beginning, middle, and end. In our case, we're saying the beginning is the Torah that's before the world. That's like the seed. Then there's the world. <clears throat> that's the middle. And then there's the future redemption. That's Aleph, base, Gimel. Aleph is Anochi, the first letter of the Torah. Base is Breshit how God created the world, and Gimel is the Geula. Yesh Lomar, we can say that since all this, everything comes by means of the Torah, that the Torah is like the blueprint, Diftorot, the Pinkasot, of the world. It says that God looked at the Torah and he created the world. <clears throat> Therefore, the Torah itself can be divided into these three things. 
already in the Torah is already this blueprint of this number three, beginning, middle, and end. The beginning of the Torah is Breshit Bora Lokim. This includes not just the beginning of the creation, but it begins. <clears throat> this includes everything which deals with the world, right? Even the Aleph, the first step, Reshit, bit Reshit, Reshit. This word Reshit means number one. That's the Aleph of the Torah. We're talking about how it is in the Torah. The, the Torah is preceding the world because Breshit means Bishvil, that the world is created, Beit, Reshit, the world is created for the Torah, which is called Reshit. The Torah is called, like we said before, Reshit Tavuato, Reshit Chachma. Kamudgash also in the letter Beit itself, that the letter Beit, it announces that it comes as a number two to the Aleph. So it's announcing that there must be an Aleph, a number one. <clears throat> so in the Torah, then the Torah begins with the letter Beit. The letter Beit, that's the beginning. This is implying that there's a number Aleph. It contains in it the Aleph. So the first step in the Torah is Beit, the bracious of the world. Number two, bracious Borel came at the Shemayim That's not just the word Breshit, but the actual creation of the world. Prata, there is, in this three levels, the creation of the world. Bria, Yetzir, Asiya. And afterwards, is all the details are drawing down into the world. Now we're talking about these three aspects of the Torah. First aspect of the Torah is the first word, Breshit. Creation of the world. Before the world is created, the Breshit. Number two is the continuation of the sentence. Breshi, that's the beginning. There's a lot of opinions that say that God, when he said Breshi, he really created the whole business. And then he un unfolded it little by little in the coming seven days, right? In the seven days. But in the first instant, God created everything. That's the Breshi. Then the, let's continue. What does it say in the first sentence? Breshi, that's the beginning. Then, that's the middle, creating the world. <clears throat> and after that, there's drawn down into the details of the Torah. This is just the first sentence of the Torah. The first sentence of the Torah that contains it at the beginning, and the middle, the heavens and the earth. And then there's all the details of the Torah that it speaks about everything that happened in the world <clears throat> in order to fulfill the purpose of the world. That's in great, great length, in the five books of the Torah. And then there's finally the end of the Torah. Okay, so first of all, we have the beginning of the Torah, that's Breshit. There's the middle of the Torah, that's the heavens and the earth, everything that's going to happen in the Torah, and all the details. And then finally, we have the end of the Torah. What's the end of the Torah? That's talking about <clears throat> Hashem that appeared to Moses, right the last sentence of the Bible. Of, of the book of Deuteronomy, that Hashem appeared to Moshe's Ad until the last day, it says. Ad Mamash, until the end of all of the Otot Moftim. If you see the last sentence in the Bible, it says all the signs and the miracles that God did for Moses, it says in the last day. What's the last day? <clears throat> everything. This means that everything that Moses did in front of all the Jewish people, this is the completion of the Torah. The completion of the Torah, which is the true redemption, the miracles, and the greatness that Moses and Mashiach will show. So we have the beginning of the Torah. We, so we have these three levels we talked about before in general. There's the Torah before the world, then there's the world, then there's the redemption. Aleph, Beit, Gimel, Anochi, Breshit, and Geula. And we also have these three love, these three steps beginning, middle, and end, in the Torah itself. The Torah starts with Breshit, that's the beginning. Then the continuation of the sentence is the heavens and the earth, that's everything that's going to happen afterwards. And finally, we have the last words of the Torah talk about the greatness of Moses doing all these miracles, that Moses is the first redeemer, he'll be the last redeemer. <clears throat> then there'll be the true redemption, revelation of God in front of everybody, like the going out of Egypt, I will show you miracles.
One, two, and three. This is also hinted in Pirki Avot, in what the ethics of the fathers, Pirki Avot. Pirki Avot, it begins, which by, we, we, by, by the way, we read this between Passover and we in Chabad, we read it several times, between Passover and Rosh Hashanah, every Shabbat, we say one, another one of the chapters of Pirki Avot. The beginning of Pirki Avot is Moses received the Torah from Sinai. This includes the whole thing of the Torah. Like we said before, the, the Torah is the beginning. Number two is that Moses, how does it start off? Perky Avot, Moses received the Torah from Mount Sinai. He gave it to Joshua. What does it mean? And Joshua and etc. until it came down to the Anshe Knesset the Gadola, the people of the great assembly. And they said, make a lot of pupils. That's the whole order of the Torah, how the Torah was given from generation to generation, <clears throat> from one to the other, the passing down of the Torah. So first of all, how does Perky Avot start? Moses got the Torah from Sinai, step number one. Step number two, Moses gave the Torah down from generation to generation until it came down to us. Number three, Siam called Perky Avot, the very end of Perky Avot, the ethics of the fathers. What does it say? God will rule forever and ever. And this means all time until the end of time, the future total redemption when Hashem will rule forever and ever. In the future, then the rulership will be His. Shlemot Milo Yakavana, the completion of the fulfilling of the intention of the Torah and the giving of the Torah for the whole, all, all of the generations. <clears throat> Namely, the future redemption. When the giver of the Torah will be revealed. So Pirkei Avot also, Pirkei Avot, the ethics of the fathers, it also hints at that right in the beginning. Moshe got the Torah from Sinai. Then after that, that's number step number one. He gave it over to all of the wise men, the Torah as it came down to us. And then finally, in the end of Pirkei Avot, the end of the sixth the chapter of Pirkei Avot, that's the end, it says, God will rule forever and ever. Yesh <clears throat> <clears throat> can say that this is one of the reasons that the Torah is attached to number three. Like I said, the rabbis say that blessed is God that he gave the, the triple Torah to the triple people and by means of the triple of the, of the third in the third day and the third month. <clears throat> and there's other, there's other, the Tori Gon, Gaon, he says there's more things that are three. <clears throat> the Torah was given, it says, the Torah is triple. There's Torah, Nevi'im, and Ketuvim. Torah, the prophets, and the writings. And it was given to a triple people, the, the Jews are Kohen, Levi, and Israel. <clears throat> By means of the third, Moses. There was Aaron, Miriam, and Moses. On the third day, the third day, in the third month. Right? The third month is, um, is Sivan, the third month of the year. <clears throat> and there's more number threes, because the whole idea of the Torah... Um, is completed the whole order of the creation. So therefore, that's number three. The Torah is number three. The beginning, the middle, and the end. That's why the Torah is divided into three. Aleph, Beis, Gimel. Beginning, middle, and end. And the Torah itself contains all these three, as we said before. And the Torah itself is going to cause all three. Aleph is Anochi, Beit is Breshit, and Gimel is Geula. And this we can find also in our Torah portion. These three things. First of all, number one, God gave the first tablets. Number two, there was the sin of the golden calf. And number three, there were the last tablets. That's Aleph, Beit, and Gimel. The first tablets that God gave, that's from God himself. <clears throat> the whole Torah was created for the sake of the Torah. God gave the Torah, Mount Sinai. The second tablets, 
the second tablet, the, the, the second tablets, that's the that's the finishing. And in the middle is the sin of the golden calf. The sin of the golden calf, and Moses going up and asking God for breaking the tablets and asking God for forgiveness. So that's the three steps that are in our Torah portion. The rabbis explain that the last words of the Torah in the end of the book of Deuteronomy, the last letters, it says that all the miracles that Moses did, le'ene kol Yisrael, before to the eyes of all the Jewish people. What was the big miracle that Moses did that everybody saw? The rabbis say that he broke the tablets. And Moses all of a sudden decided to break the tablets in front of the Jewish people. And God agreed. And he said, the, the tablets, it says the tablets that you broke, the word asher also means to be happy. And also comes from the word yesher koach. <clears throat> God said, thank you very much, Moses, that you broke them. The Cheora, what does it mean that God was thankful, said thank you, he gave Moses a big present because he broke the tablets? We can say that the meaning of this is <clears throat> just like just like by means of the sin of the golden calf that was given to the Jewish people, the opportunity to be a Baal Tshuva. Remember, we learned about that in the Mimer in the morning. To come out from the darkness of egotism and to come closer to God, the golden calf came because of egotism. The Jewish people thought about themselves. They didn't think about what God wanted. They didn't have love of God. They had love of themselves. Therefore, they had this sin. But why did this God arrange this thing, that they made this sin? In order that they would repent afterwards. In order that they would come from the darkness. They're coming from the darkness to light. This is even higher than the service of the tzaddikim, of the righteous Jews. It says that the place where a person that returns to God is standing is higher than, than the place where people were always with God. The Bali Chuva are higher than the tzaddikim. Until it says that the tzaddikim aren't even able to stand there. <clears throat> the, the tzaddikim, the police, people that were always holy, cannot even stand, can't come near the person who broke out of his darkness and came to be light. Also the same thing about the breaking of the tablets, which came from the sin, that the reason why it was broken in order that there should be the second tablets, which were in many ways higher than the first tablets. Like the rabbis say that God said to Moses, Moses said, I feel so bad, I broke the tablets. Don't feel bad. In the first tablets, <clears throat> there were only 10 commandments alone. The second commandments, I'm going to give you halacha, laws, midrash, agada, talmud, kaflam litoshia. There'll be a doubled and redoubled energy. Like it says in the Talmud, Ilmali lochatu, if the Jewish people would not have sinned, God would have only given them five books of the Torah and the book of Joshua alone. <clears throat> but it says, Barov chachma rov kas. It says, because and the, as soon as the Jewish people sinned, so God gave them all of these other books of the Torah, amazing gift that they got because they sinned. But they had to do tshuva, which is very difficult. That's the whole thing about the last tablets, that they were the, the tablets, the second tablets, they came from Moses. Moses, he carved them out himself. That's why the second tablets in some way are even higher than the first ones. As we're going to learn, God willing, tomorrow, how it is that the first tablets were in some way inferior to the second tablets. If you remember before, we said that the first tablets, that's the beginning. That's the Aleph, Anochi. And the last tablets, that represents the third stage. After the second stage was sinning and repenting, the third stage was the Gimel. The second tablets. We're going to talk about that word, God willing, tomorrow. Let's do the Yom Yom for today.
<clears throat> it said, I'm certain that when a Hasid, when any Jew is in sitting and learning, teaching or reciting a mimer of Hasidut, that all of the Rebbe's are filled with joy and their joy <clears throat> will provide that Hasid and his children, his children's children with blessing, material and spiritual. Okay, have a good day with Mashiach now. Three o'clock, God willing, we'll learn about the sin of the golden calf.